Today we're going to be talking about the somatosensory system. That's the set of pathways that take touch, temperature, and pain information from your skin and a few other locations up to your brain. Let's begin by imagining that maybe this person has taken her left hand and grabbed a hot pot handle. Now in the dermis, there are going to be all sorts of different types of receptors. There are going to be touch or tactile receptors, there will be heat or thermoreceptors, and there will also be various pain or nociceptors. These will be in the dermis. Um, and remember that all of these receptors are neurons. So they consist of input dendrite areas, long axons to carry the electrical signals, and then axon terminals at their other ends. So if I peel the skin back on this, uh, we'll be able to see some of that neural system. And if we zoom in, you'll see all of these yellow marks here, which uh, represent nerves. So um, what are we actually looking at here? Well, in the skin, the dendrites of these receptors would be receiving those pain, touch, temperature signals. The axons carrying the electrical action potential signals are all bundled together. They're also insulated by white myelin, and when bundled together, they form these long stretches here called nerves. And again, a nerve is just a bundle of insulated or myelinated axons. As we trace these nerves proximally, You'll see they go up the forearm and up the arm. Um, eventually they go through the armpit region right over here. Um, and you even saw that in your cats. And eventually they terminate at the end of the axons or in the cervical region of your spinal cord. So to review, the receptors for touch, temperature, and pain, the primary somatosensory neurons, go from the skin and other locations, send action potentials up bundled axons called nerves, and then terminate with their axon terminals in the cervical region of your spinal cord. The axon terminals will form synapses with the secondary somatosensory neurons, and these are the neurons which relay the information all the way up into the brain. Now, two things you should remember about the synapses. One, they aren't doing electrical signaling. This is where you're going to have chemical signaling. And two, uh, because these regions are non-myelinated, um, this will be gray matter where they meet. Soon afterwards, though, the secondary somatosensory neurons will fire action potentials and fire that signal up the spinal cord, down myelinated axons. So again, we'll be in those bundles of white insulated myelinated axons here in the spinal cord and brain. Uh, these long uh, bundles are called tracts, not nerves. So these somatosensory or touch, temperature, and pain tracts will travel up the spinal cord cross from one side of the body to the other here in the medulla of the brainstem for idiosyncratic reasons that we're not going to go over today, um, and then from there up into the middle of the brain. Now to show you this location where these neurons end, I'm going to have to strip away portions of the brain like so. So I actually took away the entire cerebral cortex to make things a little bit easier to see, um, and I'll remove the remaining hint of the skeletal system. So the secondary sensory neuron brought the signal up the spinal cord, across, and up the brainstem, and will end at this location right here of the diencephalon called the thalamus. Now note, since the signaling started in the left hand and we crossed over, this is now the thalamus of the right side of the brain. In general, the thalamus is a relay center, so all sensory signals come up, coming up to the thalamus will get relayed from here up to specific locations of the cerebral cortex on this side. If these were visual signals, the third or tertiary neuron in the pathway would have sent the signals to the occipital lobe. If these were auditory or equilibrium signals, the third neuron would take um, signals out to the temporal lobe. But in this case, we're talking about somatosensory, touch, temperature, or pain signals. These are going to go out to the parietal lobe, specifically the cortex of the parietal lobe. It's easier to see where the tertiary or third somatosensory neurons would go in this coronal section of the human brain. Here is the thalamus, where the secondary neurons end, and synapse in gray matter like this with the third neuron. So the tertiary neurons, dendrites, would be here. The axons would travel through white matter tracts. Again, these are bundles of myelinated axons going through this white matter here, or comprising this white matter. And these neurons would end out here in the cortex of the parietal lobe. Now specifically, this is the front of the parietal lobe, the most anterior region, and this area is called the somatosensory cortex. What's really important to know is that each region here along the cortex is receiving touch, temperature, and pain signals from a different region of the body, which is best seen in a different, and here's that image. The thalamus would be around here in this uh, particular image, and the tertiary neuron would take the signal out to specific regions again. Now the hand temp 
pain and touch signals would have ended up in this region. But you'll note that if it was, say, uh, you burned your tongue, uh, the signals would have made their way through different white matter tracts out to this region of the cortex. And this explains why people who've had damage to particular regions of their parietal cortex, for example, from the stroke, might lose sensation for part of their face, um, but wouldn't necessarily lose sensation for parts of their arms or legs. So to review, somatosensory pathways transmit touch, temperature, and pain information from the skin and other interior regions all the way up to the brain. The first neuron in the pathways also known as the primary neurons, uh, go from the skin's dermis all the way proximally and eventually terminate in the spinal cord in the cervical region. The signals going up these long axons are electrical signals called action potentials. Here, they synapse and send chemical signals to the secondary neurons of the pathway, which relay the signals all the way up to the thalamus. In the thalamus, we again have synapses with the third or tertiary neuron of the somatosensory pathway. This chemical signaling leads to an electrical action potential in the third neuron, which transmits that information out to the somatosensory cortex of the parietal lobe on this side.